Wake the fuck up, samurai. A Cyberpunk 2077 lore analysis. The conflicted lone nomad. Pan Am Palma is my second favourite cyberpunk character. Her writing is close to perfect, as well as her overall character development. Timestamps will of course be provided. We first meet Pan Am in the afterlife, as V is desperately trying to find answers for his illness, as well as chasing down a lead. That being hey. Anders Hellman. Through Rogue's assistance, we overhear a spat between Pan Am and Rogue, as seen here. No. This trouble? The net around me? You won't. You know it. I lost everything. Let me be you. plain. Again. Solve your own problems. Clean up your own shit. Fuck we then have a one-sided exchange with Pan Am, in which she says this. Be careful to bargain. Upon conversing with Rogue, V asks what the situation was with Pan Am based on curiosity, as shown here. The girl. What was her gripe? Why didn't you ask her? Might still be around, sniveling in a corner. Interestingly enough, before conversing with Rook, if you follow Pan Am, Rogue's dialogue here corresponds with Pan Am's actions. Pan Am will walk out of the afterlife and walk towards a corner and stand there. I assumed you'd be able to speak to her, but she completely ignores you. Database entry. Pan Am is a nomad, although maybe ex-nomad rings truer these days. She's locked horns with the family's leader, Saul, left the Aldercarlo nation and moved to Night City to try her luck as a merc. Pan Am's life is at the crossroads. On one hand, she knows her life needs a change. It's now or never. On the other hand, burning bridges with the Nomad family where all her friends are might have been a bit drastic. On top of that, Night City doesn't take too kindly to Nomads or have patience for people like Pan Am who are internally conflicted and dream of a brighter future. How many ghost towns do you think are there? Hundreds? Countrywide? Thousands. I drove down I-80 the other day. All you have to do is pull over after sundown. It's quiet then. And you hear it. What's that? The wind whistling through boarded up windows. Tumbleweeds scratching across dry, sandy tracks. That's how towns die. Not with a bang, but with whispers and whimpers. Biography. Pan Am Palmer was part of the Elder Caldo's nomad tribe who had traveled to the Badlands outside Night City. Due to her rebellious attitude, she ultimately left the tribe and moved to Night City. Working as a mercenary under the fixer Rogue, Pan Am was frequently paired with the nomad Nash Bane on a few gigs though she was unaware he was Raff and Shiv. Oh, I'll be sure to. I'll especially ask why she told me to work with Nash, yet forgot to mention he was Raffin. Nomads don't banish their own without a reason. So think murderers, rapists, freaks. They gather in teams, sometimes form actual gangs. Most of them are wanted and have warrants on their heads. Shit. And that bitch had me working with scum like that. Despite moving away, Pan Am maintained communication with members of the Older Carlos, including Mitch Anderson and Driss Scorpion Mariano. Is that a ghost or is it just my hangover? Fuck you too. Mm -hmm. What brings you to these parts, city girl? The big city got too small for her. 2077. During an assignment to deliver merchandise, Pan Am was betrayed by Nash, who stole both their cargo and a fort in Mackinac, also named the Warhorse. Having messed up, she angrily confronted Rogue at the afterlife, leaving without compensation or help to recover the stolen items. Sometime later, Pan Am was contacted by a local merc, V, as shown here. Hello? This Pan Am? V here. V who? V where? How did you even get this number? From Rogue. Uh. Great! Fuck! Where's that old warhorse wanna kick me now? Forget Rogue for a minute. I wanna help you. Oh, very kind. But it's far too little, far too late. So do tell Rogue she can eat my shorts. Tell it to your therapist. Calling about your ride and the merch you lost. Interested? Or are you gonna tell me to eat your shorts too? The rail freight yard on Benita Street. The one hugging the city line. We'll meet there. See ya. After helping her recover her car and merchandise, she agreed to help them capture hey. Hellman from Kangtao forces, whose AV was assumed would pass across the Badlands. Planning to ground the convoy with an EMP, Pan Am and V stormed the Corpor power plant and modified the systems Pan into an EMP. Fuck, when it failed to stop them, she used a rocket launcher to ground the vehicle. Unfortunately, every action has a reaction, and because of this stunt, the EMP had disabled communications between Pan Am and the Elder Caldos. They can't hear me! The pulse is interfering! Shit! Shortly after, V and Pan Am hear Mitch Anderson and Driss Scorpion Mariana on comms, discussing that they are en route to the AV. 
and trying to locate the position of one another. That over AV unmarked, losing out. Mesh, there? Scorpion, what the hell are Finishing they doing? Finishing up at the generators. Follow them. On my way in a bit. Pan Am hearing this panics and tries to warn Mitch and Scorpion that this is out of their league and to wait for her, or to better yet, get the hell out. Voucher. It's Kang Tao! Wait for me! Or better, get the hell out! They probably want to help the survivors, without knowing it's corporate. To no avail, V and Panam then rush to the AV site, but suffered resistance from Kang Tao drones. The Fortin's turret then malfunctions whilst V is operating it. When this happens, Panam tries fixing the malfunction. A drone's bullet then ricochets and leaves her injured, which in hindsight resulted in a permanent scar on Panam's lower left side abdomen. Panam and V then come to a stop and hear a gunshot. Panam being injured and emotional starts having the worst thoughts, thinking her family members got wiped out. Something's not right. Did you hear those shots? V, something happened to them! Let's check it out. I see the wreck, but no Scorpion or Mitch. V, connect to the drone. We'll scan the area. We have to get our bearings. Let's roll. You connecting to visual? Mm-hmm. V, if they got the Aldecaldus, if they got Mitch and Scorpion, I can't... I don't... No, I know. They then deploy an optical camo drone to scope out the area, establishing a plan to carry out the rescue mission. Unfortunately, Drish Scorpion Mariana was killed by Kang Tao. This is one of the many moments where V sees Pan Am vulnerable, remorseful, and deeply saddened by the situation, in which V tries to be empathetic to Pan Am. Oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. Your clan? Alta Caldos. Yes. They're dead. All of them. We couldn't retreat. They regrouped so fast. Started shooting rockets and shit. I lost everyone. Everyone? Scorpion, is he here? Mitch? Mitch? He's... He's safe, right? Damn, I'm sorry. I didn't make it in time. No. No! Are you sure? No, he... It'll work out the rest. Damn. I'm Everything. sorry we didn't get here mm -hmm. sooner. They were good people. Great people. They didn't have to die here. After pursuing the convoy and recovering Hellman, Pan Am left with the Elder Calders, going separate ways with V. I heard Mitch is alive thanks to you. Thanks to V and Pan Am. They both saved my ass. I just hope he was worth it. It's all I tried to raise Scorpion, but he did. Maybe I could help out somehow? I think you've helped enough. I tried to stop him. Sure, just turn around now. Let it all be damned. You're good at that, aren't you? Look, Saul, it really wasn't Pan Am's fault. Careful. You and me are not buddy-buddy. Besides, nobody's blamed anyone for anything yet. Sure, right. Pan Am was just helping me. It was my doing. My fault that AV got hit. Without me, Scorpion and his people wouldn't have gone out to grab it. That's the truth. When you're Ronaldo Caldo, you are always responsible for yourself and your people. The circumstances change nothing. I'm also headed out. Take care of Scorpion's bike. It's yours. Sometime later, the clan's leader, Soul Bright, disappeared with a small convoy of Aldecaldos. Learning of the attack, Panem returned to the Aldecaldos to help investigate. Eventually, they discovered the convoy had been ambushed by Wraiths, and Soul had been captured. To help rescue him, Panem contacted V and asked for their assistance. If V agrees to help rescue Saul, V would then meet at the Elder Carter camps. Pan Am was able to convince V to help, that is, with intel provided by Mitch. She provided cover whilst they infiltrated the gang's lair. After V rescued Saul, Pan Am drove the group away using a sandstorm to cover their tracks, seeking shelter in a deserted farmhouse. The group spent the night. Afterwards, Pan Am left the Elder Carlos. Pan Am then rewards V with her rifle overwatch and, if you romanced her, a kiss in return for the help. Please take care of her. She served me well. Putting her in good hands, Pan Am. I know. So, uh, thank you. Once again. Uh, hold up. About last night... 
we don't need to talk about that. I'm just not like that. So what are you like? More like this. Take care of yourself. You too, Pan Am. And remember, I'm indebted. Pan Am Palmer has one computer. It can be found in the Elder Caldo camp in the Badlands. The messages are from Pan Am towards Mitch, titled, I've had enough. Mitch, I'm getting the hell out. I'm sorry. I know it's sudden, but if I don't leave now, I'll call you when I'm in town. I'll look into the afterlife, find a job. Everything will be fine. Don't you worry about me. We'll talk soon. From Mitch to Pan Am. Okay, I won't mince words here. Think long and hard, girl. You believe it will be better in the big city, but that's just because you don't know what's waiting for you there. Here with us, you just butt heads with Saul. In Night City, you have to contend with everyone. Dog eat dog. The camp is your family. The city, you'll be lost in a crowd of strangers. Please come back. We'll talk. Call our heads. From Panam to Mitch. No, Mitch. I've fought long and hard of this. If I change nothing, I swear I will explode. Or kill someone. You know who. I'm leaving home, but I'm not leaving you or Scorpion, or the others. I simply cannot sit at the same table as someone to whom I'm supposed to be grateful, to whom I should have some measure of respect, and toward whom I can only muster hate, and the deepest contempt. I will not change Saul's mind, I will not stop him from letting the Corpos fuck us. I can't grow a pair of balls for him, so I will leave instead. Let me at least do that, on my terms. From Mitch to Panam, I understand, but listen, take care out there, we'll be waiting for you. Let us do that. The big plan, from Scorpion to Panam. So, how about this? We get your fawn ready for a long haul and head north, back to my neck of the woods. You know, hit the old Oregon Trail. There are waterfalls up there, like you wouldn't believe. All we have to do is get Mitch on board. Alright, I'm in. But if you ever think about making a mess in my ride like the one you've got here, you are walking. From Scorpion to Pan Am. <laughs> if they start advertising the Nomad way of life, you'd be our poster girl. The Nomad and her aptly named old warhorse. From Pan Am to Scorpion. Right, and you know someone around here who can spin this life into gold? Because I'd sure like to meet him. Facts about Pan Am. Her favorite foods seem to be pierogies and Thai food, claiming those are some things she's going to miss about Night City. There is one thing I will miss about Night City. What's that? The food. The Thai on 7th and Haywood. The pierogies down by the docks. <clears throat> Seriously? Pan Am drives a unique Fort and Mackinac called Warhorse. She clearly loves a ride based on this scene here. isn't she? Dreamy indeed. I'm surprised you wanted her back. She completes me. The fort in she drives during Ghost Town is a Colby C210 camper. Pan Am Sniper was given to her by Mitch during the Ghost Town quest and is called Overwatch. Okay. Well, I'll need that rifle of yours. And some of my own stuff. Take whatever you want and take care of yourself out there. Pan Am is a very good tactician, most likely taught from Mitch and Scorpion, as she executes such a good AV takeover plan, and names the fundamentals of a plan as AAA. Done anything like this before? Downing an AV? By myself? No. Why do you ask? Power station, EMP, the systems, networks. Came up with a really solid plan. Thank you. How you approach things, that's the trick. Mine is the AAA. Wait, what now? Assessment, assembly, action. Whatever your task, you do three things. Start by assessing what you already have and what you'll face. The problem. Then you plan with those variables in mind. Take what you have, get what you need, assemble things, people. Finally, you take action. Simple. You see this level of planning earlier as well, during the Ghost Town mission. Right. So, the intersection is powered from that transformer substation, right? The switchgear on the roof. We'll flip the switch there and everything will light up like Christmas. Understood? Classic route. Good old diversion. You know it. First, we don't know how many are coming. My thinking is it'll be a sizable crew. Second, we have to create an opening to get to my car. If they're bunched together, we won't stand a chance. So we give them a little light show at the intersection? Yes. We'll breathe some life into this dusty old town. Panama has a problem with authoritarian figures such as Rogue, Saul, and anyone trying to undermine what she wants to achieve, or her overall freedom. Seems you got a real problem with authority. What? Rogue, Saul, he your leader? Their leader. 
Seemed in a hurry to delta the hell out of there. Let's just say Saul wouldn't have been happy to see me. What happened? The reason we came to California was because he promised to change for the Alda Caldos. He claimed we would turn over a new leaf. But you saw it. We got a handful of tents on a heap of sand. A hell of a promised land. I wanted something different. Better. A lot, a lot of useful, useful things. things. The Engels left in a hurry. Biotechnica made them a good offer. Yeah. Prime. Sell us your land. You don't know that. No bulldozers, no backhoe loaders ever showed up. Lousy rotten way to get them out. Deal, Deal with the, the corp, you end with nothing, Saul. Don't go there. Not now. Pan Am's nickname is Pan, as said by Mitch sometimes. Be careful! Please! I can handle myself, man. Likewise for you. Get some Akoshi in one piece. Panam can be romanced based on her sexual orientation. She is sexually attracted to men, more specifically male V only. What's happening? Hi, Jackton. Our nervous systems are now linked. Right. Basilisk pilots working in harmony. That why I'm feeling everything doubled. It's sensory feedback. Our systems are intertwined. Would you like to try it out? Okay. I could go for that. Can you feel that? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Uh, no idea how people can focus in combat. It's probably not always this intense. How about this? Thanks for everything. For being here for me. Take care of yourself. And let me know. Well, just please keep in touch. Pan Am is very technologically adept, as you see her easily tampering with her vehicles and fixing issues like hydraulics, etc. Can I help? No, you can't. I'll be done soon. The Raffins left are crooked as a bag of snakes. Here are a few pictures of Pan Am Palmer's earlier character design. Pan Am makes it crystal clear that she is not a fan of corporations. She even pushes the leader of her clan, Saul, to avoid making a deal with Biotechnica for protection on numerous occasions. We can't hope to handle the Raffins alone. So you would sell us out to Biotechnica? Vade, tell him it's a damn rotten idea. I gotta agree with Pan Am. Sounds like a truly shitty idea. Thanks. All Saul is going to prove is that a corp can walk all over us, and we'll say thank you and ask for more. Panam has a facade of being brave and fearless, but lacks confidence in taking the leadership role of her clan, as V says, Mitch says, and she herself says. More will be spoken about this in the final Ford section, however. Is he doing what he thinks right for the Alda Caldos? Even though it's hard. Even though you're shitting your pants. Dear God, so you can see it too. He could, but Saul's no brick brain. He knows Pan Am doesn't want to fill his boots. I guess I was hoping Pan Am would mature. Mature into whom? Come on. Pretty much obvious Pan Am ought to lead the clan. Proved it amply. The only thing she proved is that she cares. But don't confuse that with wanting power. I think I get it. Pan Am's about the clan, not power. Question is whether she can reconcile the two. Hey, don't look at me. People are doubting us. Can feel it. But they still believe if it all goes to shit, Pan Am will be there for them. Because who else, right? Exactly. Who if not you? That's what I mean. It shouldn't be me. It should be... Saul? If only he hadn't gone and made all the wrong decisions to be a little more like me. I'm scared to the bone something will go wrong. That everyone will... Breakdown of Pan Am Palmer. I was generally surprised when I realized that Pan Am's backstory is relatively short, and to this day we still do not know much about her. This is ironic because she stole the hearts of many gamers, based on her actions, charm, and how supportive she is to V. She is one of the few characters to provide major value to V, such as helping V with his illness. V, back to what we were saying, I will not even pretend to understand. I don't think it has even sunk in yet. But I am serious. How can I help? Remember Hellman? He's the one who created the personality construct tech. That's why you wanted to get him. 
But it was a dead end. Now I have to figure out where to go next. Couldn't help me. Not sure anyone can. I don't believe that. You'll find a way. And once you do, let me know. I will help. Inviting him to join the Elder Koldos family. V, look around. Look at them. They could be your family. Pan Am, what do you... Stay in camp. Join us. The Welcome to the family. V, v say... Say your piece! Easier to gain a Cobra's trust than an Elder Caldos. Well spoken. So I know how much this means. To you. To me. Thank you. Will not let you down. Helping him storm Arasaka despite the risks and loss suffered. All done without a second thought, no matter if you romance her or not. So, again, just to be clear, you've called me at High Moon to ask me to help you break into Arasaka Tower, or you'll die. About the gist of it, yeah. Okay. What? Okay. Where are you? Vic's clinic. The Ripper? Right, I know where it is. Can you hold off on dying for a bit? Give it a shot, sure. Good. Don't go anywhere. I'm coming to get you. Therefore, it isn't too surprising that she is rated the best romance character in the game by the fanbase. Pan Am's overall personality. Pan Am is a strong-willed, passionate, sassy lady who is of course more than capable of defending herself. She doesn't hack enemies in combat or rush in headfirst, but she's very tactical and is a good shot with a sniper overwatch. She is also one of the few characters who has little to no cyberware, which makes her skills even more impressive. Upon scanning Pan Am, you can see that she has a charge jump, which seems to be the only implant she has, but it's possible that she may have an optical implant too, for her scouting and sniping endeavours. Although, this is not noticeable physically, so speculative at most. Pan Am has a very silly slash goofy side to her character. She can be very banterous at times. This is evident when she casually flirts with V during the Riders of the Storm mission, where V and Pan Am roleplay hotel manager and customer. Yeah, this would make for a decent little motel, wouldn't it? Little fireplace, booze. Grumpy guy at reception is the one thing missing. Have everything you need, ma'am. Mm-hmm. I couldn't ask for more. How's your whiskey, ma'am? Hmm. Warm. Subtle metallic aftertaste. Bold, yet smooth. Four out of five stars. Ma'am, I'm sure you'd be cozier with your shoes off. <laughs> After a full day in them, I'd fear a health code violation. Nonsense. After a day as full as today, you deserve to kick back. Another time is after romancing Pan Am and speaking to her on the hollow or at her camp. How's it going? Depends on what the it is. And what you want to hear. Oh, you know, the huge. I longed for you, V. Oh, I see you've already played out this conversation all on your own. Force of habit. Pan Am. <laughs> I did though. I missed you. Pan Am has a lot of sass, as throughout the game, she'll act sarcastic or teasy towards everyone. Mitch, Scorpion, Sol, V. Bad enough to make me sit quietly through all your bullshit. Looks like you're stuck with me. Mm-hmm. You disappointed? I don't know. Maybe a little, yes. Have you brought someone new? Does Saul know? Not your concern, friend. How the hell did you land in this mess? I like the color. The air freshener and booster seat came extra. You know I don't mean the car. Expiration date's from before the last war, so hopefully it hasn't turned to poison. Today's our lucky day. Lucky. Interesting choice of words. Do I hear a lecture coming on? But right now, I wouldn't mind catching a few winks. Need help? Fuck off. So listen, all I know for sure is Alt's bound to stage a coup in my head. Can't know who'll be coming back from this cyber jaunt. So I gotta thank you now. V, shut up and do whatever you have to do. Pan Am can, like a lot of characters in Cyberpunk, be very impulsive, where she states here. The thing is, I usually act before I think. Uh-huh, noticed. I know. But I also need impulses to act upon. When I do something spontaneously, I feel I'm being honest. Fuck, I don't believe this! So you'll stay put because Saul told you to. You couldn't care less about me. Pan Am. So it's about vengeance. 
the whole time. The hell you know about me? Either you're not being straight with me, or you don't know what you want. Hard to say which is Just worse. Just listen to me, for fuck's sake! Going ahead with the deal behind Rogue's back. Brave, I guess. Or fucking dumber than a drum. Pan Am and Judy are one of the few characters that Johnny is most accepting of in terms of a romance option for V. As Johnny says here, Circumstances were different, I'd say saddle up and ride after her. But here and now, just look. Damn hard to catch a girl like that. Only hope you've got is they feel a pang and stop to wait. Pan Am Palma is unlike most characters though, in that she's not the biggest fan of hard liquor. Ooh. Now that packs octane. The majority of the time, players end up drinking with Pan Am. Her choice is usually beer. At one point, players drink with Pan Am at a hotel after finishing a job. Pan Am quickly downs an entire bottle of Brosef brew before ordering another. Well, here's to that thorn of yours. Thanks for everything, partner. Another one over here. Now she could have just been thirsty after a long day's work, but that does not seem too likely. It's all you need to lead the good life. That and the occasional cold beer. Additionally, we know nothing about Pan Am's past life similar to V, such as her parents, how she joined the clan, if her parents were nomads, corpos, citizens, or even mercenaries. Pan Am's age isn't noted in game, but thanks to Power Sasko, he has confirmed she is 26 years old. V's canon age is 27, making them perfect for one another. Do you know how old Pana Palmer is? I'm assuming she's slightly younger than V who's 27. Um... Oh Jesus. I think our reference was that she was supposed to be 26. I think I'm right here. Like, uh, Michal or, or Patrick, if you guys remember better, you can, uh, you can of course uh, clarify. But I believe that she's 26. Yeah, I, I believe I'm right here. That being said, it has been established that Panam's race is Native American, which makes sense due to her complexion and braid-like hair, as mentioned by Powell Sasko here. There's a question, what is the race of uh, River and Panam? They both look mixed or Native uh, American. So uh, River, uh, uh, Rivia Wolf edit. So there was a lot of discussion, you know, uh, between uh, us actually uh, when we were creating those characters, but basically they are, um, they are Native American. Both of them, actually. The um, uh, Panam and uh, River. One thing is for certain, though, Panam cares a lot about her family slash clan. I'd like to think, though, that Panam considers Mitch, Scorpion, Bob, and Teddy as brothers, Carol as an aunt, Cassidy as an uncle, and Saul as a father figure, with other minor characters like Ellie as a younger sister. No, you have to experience You'll stop by later, right, honey? Sure. Next time, Ellie. I, I, I promise. Pan Am comes off as a lonely character too, this is especially true when she leaves the clan temporarily. The devs nailed her facial expression here, you can see a subtle look of sadness, regret and loneliness. However, what makes this scene even better though, is later on in the game, there is a dialogue choice that says this. You miss this, you know? The camaraderie. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. Probably because I was missing it too. Pan Am, although, like many characters of the cyberpunk world, is lonely and finds it hard to develop actual relationships, as she claims that she's scared of being too impulsive and being left alone in the desert. Listen, V, I... I'm sorry. I'm not very good at this. Speaking of my feelings and so forth. And I would not want to cock this up. Yet with you, I prefer to play it safe. Why is it any different with me? Because I truly care this time. Yet I fear I'll do or say something foolish and be left alone in the desert. I would rather keep you close. If only as a friend. Try following the impulse next time. Okay. Well, in any case, you've been warned. Alright. Let's rejoin the others. Final thoughts on Panam and her character development. It was really upsetting that Saul dies in the Elder Colo ending, but also fitting as it completes Panam's character development. He was essentially a father to her, but she was always in his shadow. She hated this, but she didn't want to leave this shadow. Could just pass the torch to Pan Am. He could, but Saul's no brick brain. He knows Pan Am doesn't want to fill his boots. This is primarily because she knew it was a lot of responsibility, as well as the fact that Saul was a natural born leader for the Elder Caldos, and did whatever he could for the family. 
despite her always being rebellious and calling him a coward. Saul's a damned coward. He'll be the end of the clan, I'm certain. Based on that scene, can you blame Saul? When you hold the responsibility and lives of hundreds of clan members, taking huge risks, like maintaining independence, can be the difference between the annihilation of the people you love or survival. Why Saul got his briefs in a bunch over this basilisk? He's afraid Militech will destroy us if we pick a fight with it. Pan Am then develops further trust issues when leaving the clan. This is because the first time she takes a step in trusting outside of the clan, she gets betrayed by Nash and somewhat by Rogue. Nash, you dirty-eating bastard. I will strangle you. What am I supposed to tell you? That I'm not about to let my partner rob me and get away with it? That my fixer made me look like a goddamn fool? It's as Mitch says on the terminal to Pan Am. In Night City, you'll have to contend with everyone. Dog eat dog. This makes her indecisive in whether she should go solo in Night City or back to the clan. But she then slowly realizes the importance of family and home when spending time alone in Night City. You don't miss life in Night City? At times, perhaps. I miss the feeling of having a new beginning. Of freedom. But I also haven't forgotten the emptiness. The feeling of realizing it means nothing if you're alone. She then meets the lone merc V, still keeping her barriers up. V then slowly but surely breaks down her walls. This is exceptionally true when V has this conversation with Pan Am. Do you have anyone you would call close? I haven't been so lucky. I see. Pan Am then realizes how privileged she is to have someone that she can rely on. Her clan. Whilst RV is lonely, terminally ill and barely surviving in a dystopian world. I do admit Saul went wrong with the Militech deal and this caused tension and potentially a shift in the leadership for the clan. Pan Am! So it begins. What's the meaning of this? Exactly what you see. The Basilisk. All I see is two trucks with giant Militech logos on them. Fuck Pan Am, you can see them from miles away! You think we don't have problems enough on our hands? The Raffins could rear their heads at any moment. And now we have Militech to worry about too. Stop it! Fuck! Just shut up already! Do you want to serve corporations forever? Fine, go right ahead. In that case, we'll leave the Basilisk as a souvenir of what this family used to be. Or you know what? Maybe next time we're attacked, we'll be able to fight back! As soon as I'm done with Biotechnica, we call a family meeting to discuss this. Discuss you. Until that time, I want these trucks out of my sight. And the Basilisk? Can we put it together? Do what you want. Just get out of my sight. But if I were to compare Saul and Panam to other characters without going in depth, it would be Panam Hanako and Saul Saboro. During the game, Hanako claims to be the heart of the clan by providing stability, but Hanako also says she keeps a neutral stand and never opposes the family, which is of course Arasaka. Whilst Panam is similar in this regard, as she is the heart of the Elder Koldos clan based on this scene here. People are doubting us. I can feel it. But they still believe if it all goes to shit, Pan Am will be there for them. Because who else, right? Exactly. Who if not you? Therefore, Pan Am provides stability in the clan but has opposing views if the clan isn't developing or is seeking help via corporations. As for Saul, in regard to Saburo, Saul is a great leader, commands respect, and has held reign since Pan Am was a child. Saul doesn't try to appease clan members but takes charge and does whatever is necessary for the survival of the clan. Pan Am even claims that she even looked up to him as a child. I still can't believe he let himself get captured. Anyone else? But Saul? You said yourself he's not at the top of his form. Yes, but moving civilians across the border during a bombardment? Hijacking a petrochem tanker? Opening the valves? Cranking a few figure eights to set the desert ablaze and give the kids a fun show? That's the Saul I remember. All that are idols. I know. Additionally, even Saul says about Pan Am, the clan would divide and fail, but also mentions the same thing about himself. But the family comes first. Saul. Let me finish. I also know there's just one thing that could break it up at this point. If Pan Am and me... If we went our separate ways, the Aldecaldos would not survive that split word to occur again. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Therefore, upon Saul's death, someone had to fill that void, and this is when V comes into place. V accomplished this by being supportive and empathetic towards a vulnerable Pan Am during Scorpion's death, her clan members, and once again with Saul. Scorpion said I would hate Night City. He knew you that well. Probably better than I know myself. He said when I'd had enough of the city, we would stock up on canned kibble, fill a couple of thermoses with coffee and whiskey, and 
hit the road. He said we would get away from it all. Sounds like a real adventure. Yeah. But he's gone. Shit, me. Why is everything shit, shit, shit? Hey, I know. Look, you're alive. Still got a few things to take care of, too. Mm-hmm. You know it. They're coming for him, don't worry. You know what? What? This is my life right here. I step out of one pile of shit, only to trip into another bigger one. Pan Am. And pull in everyone else after me. I'm done. You hear me, P? I fuck up again, you better give me a good kick in the ass. But you didn't fuck any... Promise me! All right, I promise. Saul, once. Do you know what he told me? That anyone is truly free just once. When they know they have nothing to lose. Exactly. Next month, that's us. Got nothing to lose, and that's how we live. Not only this, but V was one of the few that truly understood Pan Am, in which he listened to Pan Am, provided support, as well as backing her up against Saw. Scorpion and the rest. Look, I know how you feel. I mean it. I'll help you settle your score with Kang Tao. I will destroy them, V. Every last one. We're in this together. To the bitter end. You know what, V? You're alright. You help me with Nash, you help me with Mitch. To my mind, I owe you a favor. We can't hope to handle the Raffins alone. So you would sell us out to Biotechnica? V, tell him it's a damn rotten idea. You gotta agree with Pan Am. Sounds like a truly shitty idea. Thanks. What could you possibly know about it? More than you think, Saul. Used to work for Arasaka, so seen plenty. Arasaka's not Biotechnica. The difference is not in the MO. That's always the same. You know what you are to them? Labor. To be exploited and ultimately consumed. Best case scenario. Thank you, V. I could not have said it better. Last night, when we were talking to Saul, thanks for standing up for me. You really think you can forbid Pan Am from doing anything? Trust me, no point. She'll do whatever she wants. I know that I asked you for help myself, but... Why did you agree? Because it's important to you. But is that all? I... Sorry, that sounded worse than I intended. Rather than listening to respond and argue, as Saul does. I see no point in arguing with Saul. We can't win. So, given up? Of course not. We'll take the Basilisk ourselves, then wait for Saul to admit we were right. You saved his life. You want to fuck things up all over again now? I saved his life, yet somehow he still ignores everything I say. Moreover, V provides a perspective on being alone, which makes Pan Am aware of how privileged she is to have others that care about her in the dystopian world of cyberpunk. This is exceptionally the case for Nomad V, as V and Pan Am say to each other here. I miss this, you know? The camaraderie. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. Probably because I was missing it too. Then. Night City, you're alone. Even in a crowd. But here... Feels like I'm part of something important. So you are where you need to be. Thanks, Pan Am. Had no idea you and the Aldecaldos had made up. They continue to grind my gears something terrible. But, you know... They're family. Exactly. This means that, with Pan Am's good heart, no. rebellious nature, and tactful thinking, side, she was a force to be reckoned with, different. but she lacked confidence. Totally Therefore, all all, these leadership skills and support towards Pan Am such as being the only one to hear her voice, support her decisions, provides what she was lacking, and creates a dynamic hole to her character again. People are doubting us. I can feel it. But they still believe if it all goes to shit, Pan Am will be there for them. Because who else, right? Exactly. Who if not you? That's what I mean! It shouldn't be me! It should be... Saul? If only he hadn't gone and made all the wrong decisions to be a little more like me. I'm scared of the bone something will go wrong. That everyone will... Be right there with you tomorrow. Whatever happens, we'll be together. We'll manage. I don't know what I would do without you. Do what you needed to. What do you know, V? Yeah? Are you not afraid to die? Not as much as I'm afraid for you. Come here. 
Any for your thoughts? I'm thinking about the first night I spent up here. I've been on the road. I was on my way back and wanted to clear my head before hitting camp. Before another likely shouting match with Saul. It was completely dark. Empty. Not a star in the sky. All I heard was the wind and a few engines in the distance. And I sat here waiting for the world to fall away. For my mind's RPM to drop to zero. Did it? No. I realized that night it wouldn't happen again. That my mind would always be on the road. Even while I was sitting, freezing on a cliff. I could sit here with you all night. I think I'd like that. Such is how Panam and Saul were whole near the end of the game. Come on, Saul. If I have to leave the clan, please just say so. Spare me another speech of yours at the very least. I'm afraid you'll have to sit through a few more. Because from this day forward, you will lead this family by my side. I will what? I wish to do this properly, but fine. Have it your way. I was wrong. You were right. That's the truth. May it never happen again. But I, I, I made a mess of so many things. But I changed my mind. You risked everything for this family. Not even knowing whether you'd be welcome the next day. Okay. Okay. Well, I... Many things will have to change. Yes, and to start with, we need to leave this place. Quickly. We can't wait for Militech to find us. Of course. I will prepare our route. On the other hand, some may argue V isn't a leader. Whilst V isn't a definitive leader, he portrays a level of leadership skills. Especially if it was Nomad, and maybe even Corpo V. It is established in the star's ending that Panam is the actual chieftain of the Elder Koldo clan after Saul's death, based on the end credits here. Hey V, listen, I don't think I'll make it back to camp tonight. Sandstorm's coming our way. No choice but to sit tight and hold it out. Just wanted to say, uh, I know this isn't the first time. You know, that we had plans. Never realized how hard being a chief would be. Always looked so easy from the outside. I'm just... I'm so lucky to have you, V. You can't even begin to imagine how much it means to me. How... Guess it's time to go. I'll make it up to you. I promise. However, whilst Panam is mostly guiding the direction of the clan, V and Mitch probably contribute a good amount to the decision-making process. That is to say, the essential dynamic once again is at least two, and that would be Panam and V, just like it was Saul and Panam side by side. Lastly, the beauty surrounding this story is the double entendria in Panam's theme, which is called Outside or No More. It paints a picture of how Panam left the clan and returns later on, meaning she no longer feels like an outsider due to her opposing views and how the clan operates under Saul, as well as the internal conflict she battled, which was deciding whether she'd sacrifice clan for independence. Panam also had the time to develop a new perspective, as well as come back to the clan respected further. Panam missing from camp at such a critical moment? She'll have some explaining to do. What is she to you? Lemonade? I see her! Hell! Leave her alone! To Saul and Panam. Because if they don't kiss and make up, Everything's liable to go tits up. The other meaning is how V is not considered an outsider no more when progressing through the stars ending. Hey, you and Pan Am. Something I need to know about. It's funny you should ask. I thought we'd smoothed over the rough edges between us. Then you showed up. Pan Am thinks so too? You'd have to ask her yourself. See, V? You're like the outsider who happens upon a family and witnesses nothing but endless quarrels. Then all of a sudden, the outsider's presence is noticed, and the family members shake hands, join hands, become stronger than they were before. Understand? Yeah. At least I think so. Good. This is even more impactful if V is a nomad, as the story begins with V losing a family in the beginning, and finding another in the end. Ultimately, telling Panam and V are outsiders no more, and are going home. Well? It's perfect. All great, Pan Am. We're going home. This concludes the story of the conflicted lone nomad. Thank you so much for watching Tombs and be sure to look after yourselves and remember. Huh. You just discovered what it takes to become a legend. Grab your eye. Let's mobilize.